to Stream Geeks Live. Tess Protesto here. And Paul Richards, and this is episode 19. Yeah, today is all about a free live streaming software. Yes, so there, really when it comes to free live streaming software, we're really talking about open broadcast software, and it really has come quite a long ways in the past few years. Yeah, it's a great option, as I mentioned in the pre-show, uh, for those of you that might be at an entry-level stage of your live streaming experience, or if you're on a tight budget, budget, who doesn't love free? So it's a great place to start. So that's going to be our feature topic of the week. And now it's time for the Stream Geeks Feature Topic of the Week. So we're using a mix of computers and live streaming software today. We've got OBS on my laptop here. We've got vMix running in our main broadcast system. And they can all actually be connected using the new tech NDI. So it makes OBS, even for us professional broadcasters, a real usable tool. Um, and then if you're just starting out, perfect place to start too. Yeah, let's talk about why you wouldn't just want to, you know, stream directly through Facebook and YouTube. OBS is a step up from that how for our new streamers. Yeah, here. no, that's a great question. And I actually have this picture here that really I think we can dig into. Um, and I've got this picture actually loaded up in vMix so we can show it full screen. But basically what we're showing here is this is a picture of, uh, it's a graph of feature richness and ease of use. Okay, so it's and about we loaded the complexity. This in at the very bottom of the, the vMix input. And basically, when the more feature rich something is, mm -hmm. the harder it is going to be to use. Bit of a trade off so, there. Yeah, so it's always a trade off. Um, so you can see here, like the new tech TriCaster is incredibly feature rich but it's very hard to use, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Some yeah. people say it's easy. I don't, I will. I don't believe that. I'm sure all. once you master it, it's like nothing. Once it's but it yeah. takes the time and mm -hmm. the learning curve there. So it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> um, vMix and Wirecast I have over here, incredibly feature rich, mm -hmm. easier to use than the TriCaster, but still probably harder to use than like XSplit, OBS, vMix, and then even like Facebook's built-in app, which is just click a few buttons. Right. So it depends on where you want to be, but the biggest tip I can give anyone out there today is basically that whatever software you use, you need to like, kind of dedicate yourself to. Pick right? one, whichever one might be best for you. Do your research mm -hmm. and then try and master that one before moving on to the next one or upgrade. And we have an ultimate guide to live streaming you can download on our website that might walk you through this because we're not going to have a whole lot of time to talk about all of these today. But the more features you're looking for, the more time you're going to have to put in. And, you know, you really got to dedicate to one. So if you're going to go with OBS, go with OBS. It's a great mm -hmm. software. It's free. It's a great starter. And if you're going to go with vMix, get that free trial and go at it because you're going to need to learn one. All the buttons are in different places. Mm -hmm. yeah. Though I can totally see somebody starting at OBS when they decide, hey, I kind of want to add some overlays, maybe a video clip into my live stream. That's why you're going to want to upgrade from just streaming directly to Facebook or YouTube or from our cameras. And then maybe when you're comfortable with switching and whatnot, but you need more um, professional type um, additions to your stream, then you go to vMix or XSplit or Wirecast and, Wirecast and so on and so forth. So it's definitely a great option for that. So um, exactly. And uh, so what we'll do is we're going to talk about the basic requirements. Tess is going to tell her what you need before you can even start using OBS. This can get kind of techy. So I'm going to use my notes. But there's three computers that we can tell you uh, guaranteed that OBS is compatible with these computers, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Yes. OK, so here I am going to my notes. For Windows, you're going to need Windows 7 or newer. And DirectX 10.1 compatible GPU. Some of these things are definitely going to be for the more technical people to understand um, some of this. For Mac OS, you need an Intel CPU. PPC is not supported. An OpenGL 3.2 compatible GPU, Mac OS 10.10 .10 or newer. And when it comes to Linux, you need an OpenGL 3.2 compatible GPU or end, excuse me, an X window system. That was a little bit of a tongue twister there, but hopefully for those of you who've done your research, know a little bit about computers, that will help you gauge whether or not OBS is going to work with your computer. And if not, and you're a beginner, um, why don't I post this information for you so that you can clarify whether or not your computer is compatible uh, with OBS. But 
if you have a Windows or a Mac, you're probably pretty safe if it's Windows 7 or newer or Mac 10.10. Moving on from that, we're going to talk about, for those of you who are a little bit experienced with OBS, some of the amazing upgrades they've recently made that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, about no, I'm super excited about the new upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, you really seem to like this one that we have showing up right here. Yeah, there's something about just the color change uh, in, in terms of their template and, and outline here that just seems more user-friendly to me. The the white background that they used to have, which maybe we can show mm -hmm. them a little bit, was a little bit alarming. It looked kind of yeah. old school computer esque. If you're going to be using this, looks more like VMix to me or something. Yes. So maybe that's why I'm biased towards so it. But... Let me show my screen, my my uh, screen full screen because I want to show you uh, how to get it, your your OBS to look like this because it looks awesome, mm -hmm. um, and you might be stuck in the old format, which doesn't look too good. Maybe eliminating all that white makes the button stand out to me and, and yeah, easier I to find things or something like so that. So this is the default, and it's kind of ugly. Um, it's not that great. You don't and see that preview output either. You, you can't see the preview output. That's throwing um, me off. So it just so that in general is one of the biggest parts of this. So let me show you guys when we hit this button down here, studio mode. When we hit studio mode, that's when we get our preview and output. Okay, it's starting to look like it makes a little bit more sense to me now. So we can do, and I'll show you guys stinger effects now in OBS okay, as well. Okay, there's a new feature yep, that we'll they added. We'll talk about some cool new features. But I love the new template. So if we just go to settings and we hit under general, the theme to ranchy, it just looks there you go. so much better. Mm -hmm. Everything is just easier on the eyes and it's so much better. So that is, um, is, is a that big... new, this option for? <laughs> Some of our viewers are saying boo Facebook. Yes, YouTube gave us a copyright strike that we couldn't get around. Uh, so that's new. So the stingers are new. Then there's a new modular docking system. I want to show you guys this. Look, you can pop now pop out the mixer. Mm. You can now pop out sources. You can rearrange them so you, you can, can have sources on one side, controls on the other, and have tabs. So whatever you're and comfortable so, with, wherever the options are easiest for you, you can design the layout accordingly, which is really cool. That's pretty cool. So you can move them all out. You can pop them all out. So you could have on a 4K display, you know, 1080p and then two different, you know, windows. And it's really, really nice. So the dockable system. You can now have default buttons and filters and sources. You can do source locking. So if you spend a lot of time getting a source to a specific place, mm -hmm. you can now lock it, uh, which is really nice. And that's what these little lock buttons are over here. What does that exactly mean? So let's say we've gotten... Like, for example, we've got all four of these, and they're in different spaces. Like, this is actually an RTSP feed, which we're going to show soon. But RTSP feeds, uh, the StreamGeek site. So if we've got them, let's say, laid out in, like, a picture-in-picture, -picture, mm -hmm. then we can lock them so that they don't move and you don't bump oh. it or something. So now it's locked. Can't move and it or bump it. And it's also layered. Yeah, and there's layers as well. Nice. So we'll go over a full tutorial, but that's brand new. Previewing of scaling, audio clipping are now is now uh, more visual. They've got a visual bar for audio clipping, and the stingers, which are so cool, we're going to show you that oh, as that's well. The stingers. Um, so let's start at the very beginning of this tutorial. Where do we get OBS? So that's a good place you to go start. to OBS. See, is it OBSproject.com? And, and I will put that in the chat. So. Boop, there it is, obsproject.com. So you just go here and you go ahead and click download OBS and it will ask you um, which version you'd like, Windows, Mac, or Linux. So download the version that you need and go ahead and launch it. And we've already got it kind of running here, so we've got it. And let's go a little bit over the interface. So first of all, on the bottom right, by default, you're gonna have scenes. And these scenes are essentially rebuilt areas that you can switch to and from. So you might have a scene for your intro, you might have a scene for your outro, you might have a scene for 
like this playlist we have right now, where it's just kind of like our PowerPoint playlist, mm -hmm. where it's like you and Give I. Give a presentation. And presentation. If you want to put your logo in, you might add that as an, as an image. People spend time with these scenes. And then you can transition between the two scenes. Scenes. Just like this. Transition. Hmm. And I have it set to be a stinger transition. And it transitions to and from right here. So we have a preview, what is set to go live, and this is what your audience is seeing, and that is the output, what yes. is live. So there you go. We just did uh, two different transitions. How do we add a camera if we want to add our PTC Optics camera? Good question. So let's go ahead and add some RTSP cameras, because I know I'm getting a lot of questions about adding RTSP cameras, and I've actually got one here. So there's two little menus. So there's the scene menu, and there is the sources menu. So in the sources area, that's where we add different pieces of media. So if we go over to media source, basically these media sources here, we can click the plus button. Plus button. The plus button. <laughs> Let me add just an image to make this super simple. And you just you name the image. Let's say image test one. And you just browse and open the file. Same thing would be true for uh, videos, and same thing is true for cameras connected to your computer like a webcam. Okay. So you can bring everything in that way. That's where all your sources are. And then someone was asking about RTSP. Mm -hmm. If you click the media source, this is built in. You don't even need a plugin for this. You do media source, RTSP, colon, slash, slash, the camera's IP address, slash, one. And you have all the hardware decoding when available, hide source when playback, auto, okay. And go ahead and click that. And as you saw earlier, it was pulling in our camera. I'm not sure why it's not pulling it in now. but <laughs> That's because we're live and that's, that's what happens. <laughs> but um, that is how you pull in an RTSP feed. I have to determine. I think we were pulling it into our, our other. You can only pull it in one, t one at a time. I'll try pulling in, in the second stream, which is slash two, and click OK. So that's where the sources are. This is where the scenes are. And you switch back and forth between them. So you can do quite a bit. Even if the multi-camera production, you would have each camera as its own scene. And as you switch between the different cameras, um, you could do different transitions, cuts, fades, all of that stuff. Pretty fun B&H NAB New York footage. There. This is the NAB New York footage from Tessa and I's... Uh, trip to New York. That was fun. Um, let me show you guys the, uh, so we lo looked at the studio mode. Now I want to show you guys NDI and the NDI plugins built into this. So now ah, the magic a word new scene. NDI. Uh, NDI scene. Yeah, we just got a question about NDI with uh, OBS. Hopefully this will help that person. We hit plug. Now, we, you do need to install the plugin and it's readily available. Just type in to Google NDI plugin, follow the instructions. That's free. It's completely free. And once you've done that, you do need to rest uh, install a driver from New Tech and you need to um, restart your computer. Once you've restarted your computer, as I have, you can see NDI sources here. Add new NDI source, click OK. And from the drop down menu, all of the NDI sources available on our network ah. are now here. And it's a plethora of. Huh? So I could take the output of. VMAX, click OK, and that is what we're broadcasting right now from nice. our main PC. Why, is there a reason you think that somebody's inputs would not be showing up? Available NDI sources? Um, that would be, that would have to do with their network. Okay. Um, so if, for example, everything has to be on the same local area network. If you're not seeing inputs, that's probably because your computer that you're not seeing it on is somehow not on the same network as the computer that you're looking for. Okay, that makes sense. Because um, everyone that I've talked to has been pretty good about that. Green screens, by the way, do work. Um, we don't have one to test with us right now, but let's say you were to pull in a, <sighs> what they call a Sorry. video capture device. Oh, God. <laughs> Here's my integrated webcam that's being pulled up here. Um, there's a whole bunch of options here once you get into it um, and you click properties or I think it's actually it's in here somewhere as one of the inputs you can basically is it filters 
Oh yeah, filters and then can you, can you access add these chroma key in there? And one of them is chroma key. Okay. And like I won't I won't be able to do this because I don't have a green screen, but you would add green or blue or whatever you're chroma keying out. So you can do chroma key. You can do That'd quite cool. a lot of stuff here. I, I'm hoping that we're gonna have a PTZ option plugin built in with our programmer one of these days. That to do would be this. certainly a nice upgrade. So that pretty much covers everything. Um, I do have one more slide I wanted to share. I think I, I loaded it into vMix at the bottom. But the general takeaway, in my opinion here, is that it's very powerful. It's one of the most popular softwares out there. It's open source. Yeah. So if you're a programmer, you can program whatever you want to this thing. I don't get exactly what that would add to, for a programmer. I you're right. I mean, it's... it's. Well, no, I just to, like would need an example. Like, for example, like Cameron, and our programmer, could program an, a plugin for it that could allow people to connect to our cameras and pan tilt zoom them. Okay. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. There's a good one. <laughs> and I hope you guys like our new little bug down there. That's our little bug, our Stream Geeks bug. Made in After Effects. We're going to do a whole After Effects show for live video production soon um, in our post-production area, maybe. But that takes us to... Our live video moment of the week, huh? Let's do it. Okay. And now it's time for our live video moment of the week. We're moving. We're moving. Not fast enough. So we were going to show it on your computer now that I'm thinking about it. Were we? I thought Michael had it as an input on vMix. Did you have it as an input on vMix? The YouTube link. I thought we had it under segments. Oh, no, you did have it. Fix okay. Yep, I got it. There we go. Okay, so the live video moment of the week is a video game championship. And what was wow. interesting, of course, is because it was presented live. And their format was very similar to the Yow people Yow, winner that of King's Cup 1 in Los Angeles, California. Top four clock. at King's Cup 2, Atlanta, um, Georgia. Live crowds, not going to phase the man. Music lighting. master. Yeah, great lighting. It's, it was extremely pro professional and legitimate. Wow. A what is views. the game? Clash Royale? Yeah. A million views. I mean, people take this very seriously. This is a high quality production. Wow. Super cool. And one of the things I love about Clash Royale. Do you know that game? Yeah, just hit count. I didn't know the game. I just thought that the production was amazing. Yeah. Well, that's that's a cool. The one. video stopped playing now. That's a cool. Yes. Um, Sorry, guys. The video stopped playing. But that takes us to our next topic, which is the branding quote of the week, Tess. I think you got a good one here. It was. This it is was, a great one. It was actually a meme. And now, the inspirational marketing quote of the week. It is a meme. Actually, let's show this meme. Michael, do you have an input that zooms in on me? Hey, guys. This is old school when we didn't have inputs in vMix and streaming software. You hold up a picture of the image that you want to share. We would, have, we would hire somebody to hold up a sign of our logo in yeah. the background of our video. It's a meme. One does not simply just hit go live. <laughs> and I thought that, you know, other people like us that have a live show would really, that would yeah. hit home because people think it's easy and it's yeah. truly not. There's yeah. a lot more to it. There's a lot of pre-production that goes into creating wonderful live streams. So that yes. one hit home. That was a funny that one. Was, that one's totally hit home. And it almost is something that we need to learn a little more about because almost every show that we've done these past couple of weeks has been, there's been at least a few things where we're like, oh, we forgot to do that. I think we it's the adjustment with the new location. Yes. We're a little bit out of our game right <laughs> yes. now. Yes. A uh, little bit out of our game. YouTube's Still not pulling even things working. together. YouTube's not working. They flagged us for nothing. But what anyhow, can you do? What can you do? So the super tool of you the week. You put up and I'm you show up. I'm excited for this one. This is a cool tool we're going to share with you guys. Tool yeah. And now it's time for the super tool of the week. 
So here's a tool that almost everyone knows about. I got a video of our installer, Robert, using this. Um, oh, was this the tool last week that everyone's like, you never used one of them before? Yeah, no one thought, well, no, no. All right, so this was the tool last week. Same company, though, that makes this. So this is the tool last week, right? Mm -hmm. This is made by Klein Tools, the Land Scout Junior. This is what we and used. And it's Roberts. <laughs> this is Roberts. His name is on it. But if we go to the video of him installing it, I'm going to talk with you guys. I'm just going to voice over this here. These are the cables we installed, by the way, in our studio. Um, even though everything's Ethernet-based, we still wanted to do SDI as backup. We had to run 3.5 millimeter audio cables for the tally light system, HDMI to each one of the monitors, um, and that's how much cable it was. So it was not a little bit. It was pounds and pounds of cabling. And then we wanted to run all those cables through the wall. So here Robert <laughs> is determining where we're going to put that little grommet where the, the cables are going to come out. And I've never seen an install like this, so it was very interesting. We ran all the cables up through the wall in one giant bundle, and <laughs> then we split each one of them off into their, because each one was going to a different space, and the video is still playing. That's my had favorite a little, part. And so this is what it looks like above the ceiling. So it kind of everything spiders out, um, and you can see here that part, some of the cables are coming over here, some of the cables are going over there. Some of the cables are getting roped over to the side. At this point, we and still have some This cable. is the super, super tool. So that right there is what's called a steel metal fish. And what it does is it's a long metal cable, mm -hmm. and a high, high uh, density steel. And you run it through the wall because it's taped to another cable. And then you run it through the wall until you get it there. And then you can pull the cables through. All you electricians out there are likely very familiar is. with See those that? handymen. That's our pull cable. We and wouldn't be nowhere without that together. little tool, huh? So that's what it's 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 a called a Klein tool steel cable fish. Yeah, my dad actually used them to run HVAC for us in our apartment. So you've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the super tool. Everyone knows about that. Um, except for like regular people like us don't know about that. But <laughs> it's a it's a fun little tool and we learned about it. Um, so next is our random tech fact of the week. So our random tech fact of the week has to do with the new tech NDI plugin that we have available in OBS. You scared me for a second. Why? I thought you were going to say, like, in our cameras, ready oh, to yeah. go. That's what we're hoping for oh. uh, soon enough. But the random tech fact is that it was actually released in June of 2017. So it's actually been around since June, July, August, September, November, October, December. So it's been around for six months. November, October. October, November. <laughs> uh, never could get those right. Aw. But, um... Yeah, so that, that's been around for six months, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what that can do for people. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how long we have been talking about NDI. Yeah. Because I didn't hear much about it when I first started here, but it was Comes about ever since NAB. Uh -huh. NAB last year, it was like, <laughs> and that was the big news at NAB as well, from what I've yes, been told. it was. So... I think it was two years ago, NAB, and this is going back to, for those of you who use vMix, vMix 17, which was, this is April <laughs> 2016, I believe, was the NAB where NDI was released. And we're at vMix 20 now? Now we're at vMix 20. Yeah, they do two releases per year, so that would make sense. So it was vMix 17 in 2016 in April. Then 2000, and for you vMixers out there, the odd number releases are the big releases, with the breaking new features mm -hmm. and the even number releases are just like little so things. So we're that expecting people can ask some for. some stuff from them at NAB. Something serious. Mm -hmm. That's why they always do the big odd odd number of releases at NAB. They never seem to run out of features to add. No, well they're in a good market to never have to worry about that. But um so VMix seventeen was was VMix call. Or mm -hmm. no. It was N it was NDI. NDI was the big release and then VMix 18 was like a small one. I don't remember what was in there. I think data sources was in there. Okay. And then VMix 19 was VMix call. 
Where, where did vMix Social fall in that? That's been around for We could do a, a history of vMix on the yeah. show one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so by the time that last NAB, so April 2017, came around, that's when NDI was really starting to be built into real products. Although still, it felt like almost all the products were prototype coming soon. Finally, here we are at the end of 2017, going into 2018, and now there are more NDI products shipping, including a new tech camera. Our camera's very, very close, and right up there with like Live View just released a new NDI product. There's more NDI products on the network, but anyway, that are available on the market. But what I'd like to talk about is OBS supporting NDI and how people could use that. Okay, cool. So. One of my favorite applications for the new tech NDI is a confidence monitor. And we've been using it. You were using it instinctively without even knowing what you were doing, it felt like. When? Like, we have another studio in the front, right? Mm -hmm. And you remember you were like, oh, how am I going to see what, what uh, Michael's doing in the broadcast studio? Oh, I'll just pull up vMix and pull in. Oh, uh, yes, NDI yes. We have been using that. So... If you are just wanting to set up a confidence monitor... You can get real-time feedback yeah, from real anywhere on your network. Anywhere on your network of the broadcast studio. And you might not want to pay for vMix because even the lowest version of vMix is $60. So you might actually want to just use OBS, which is free. Mm -hmm. Put it on a Windows or a I Mac I wonder or computer. if it saves some sort of bandwidth or something running OBS over vMix. It's a little bit more lightweight, probably. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a, 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 a valuable reason. But uh, we are not live on YouTube, George. We got we to... Gotta, oh, can we show our community strike? Our proof, our black eye. Whoa. We have... Um, we'll share the good, the bad, and the ugly over here. I took a picture of it just so that we could share it. So we've been through this multiple times with YouTube. And the funny thing is, is that... Sometimes it happens when you're not even streaming. We were not streaming on vMix yet. We did have our stream keys in, but we were not mm -hmm. streaming and we did not click uh, go live or anything like that. Yeah. And so there's no They're video just listening on to you. YouTube uh, that shows it either, which was the funny thing. Um, yeah. So we've got a picture to prove it. Uh, you, may, you may have seen this before. Uh, it should be if you were all at the very bottom. It should just be one of the pictures there. Yeah, sorry about that, George. It was too late from when the email was sent out because we were planning on just going live now on our channel, yeah. at, uh, you know, just on our channel, and that wasn't working. It seems that they have given us a little bit of a timeout. Yeah, okay, so I think that's today. what happened. Okay, so here's what happened, just so that everyone can understand how this works. Basically... And this is completely random. So if you have a copyright strike on YouTube, they may actually ban you from live streaming until it's resolved. Mm -hmm. And it can take up to seven days. That may be what just happened. Let's cross our fingers. It does not take up to I seven days because we have another show in two days. But on a different channel. True. All right, here we go. Here's the picture. This is what happened. Um, this live stream recording is not available. Sorry about that. That is your first key that nothing ha we didn't even stream anything or else something would be there mm -hmm. and then they even contradict themselves by saying we removed this video because it violates community strikes but you'll be able to view the video for seven days from when it was removed uh except there's nothing there not even audio nothing we weren't even streaming we had to appeal the decision but they've now revoked all streaming rights um to youtube so youtube if you're out there this has happened to us more than once in fact Michael, do you have that picture of when it happened to us a year ago? There should be another picture right next to it. This has happened to us more than once. We've been streaming for two years. It doesn't happen often. Was it the same language? It, well, what kind of language? Here we go. All right, so this is an email that was sent to us on episode 14. So, yeah, this has happened to us more than once. Wow. Um, copyright owner ID. Okay, now this was an actual copywritten piece of music yeah they're not sending us anything like that now um so this is interesting because this is this is a copywritten piece of music the other one was a like it was literally an algorithm fail where nothing was even streamed and we got flagged yeah there's no audio recording no video there's nothing there i really think that this was not anything we could have controlled 
Yeah, nothing we could have controlled. Now that, the second one we showed was a real copyright strike. We had, um, we got that from audio blocks and that should come with all royalty free usage rights. Mm -hmm. So we, sh we, we, we appealed it. We appealed it and we won. Mm -hmm. But now we have to appeal this. And the thing I don't like about YouTube's approach here is they're just blocking. See, what we tried to do was, so they, they revoked our ability to live stream to mm -hmm. YouTube. They, we were not able to create a new event. And what I thought the workaround was, okay, let's stream to our live now. Mm -hmm. Even though we were streaming to our live now, it looks like it won't even let that happen. Yep, we are unable to stream completely on YouTube from StreamGeek's page. And it, they are saying seven days, so... It's best if we're the test subject for this to, to bring up uh, these issues. So, and anyway. there's so many things that happen when you're going live with a multi-camera system and all this stuff. And then, you know, Michael's over there like, what's going on? What did I do wrong? You didn't Paul's do like, did wrong. you click go live? Yeah, and then, He's well, like, I did it. But then I'm wondering, did Tess go live? Like, why would she just go live to, like, with her phone? <laughs> and then even Facebook was acting weird. Yeah. And Facebook like, was acting weird. Facebook was acting weird. So it was. I, we were like, because you know those days when the internet stops working in the world, things start falling from the sky. And... Don't give me anxiety. So anywho, that was odd. Um, Drake says, you made YouTube mad. I made Facebook mad. <laughs> it's just time to make all the social medias mad. Yeah, we made YouTube mad. Seven days seems to be the standard time for social media grounding. Yeah, social media grounding. <laughs> We've been so grounded. grounded. I didn't know that we were days. that important, but... We're a little bit worried about that. Next show might not be able to be It's not good for on. us when that's the majority of what we do. Yeah, it's like, guys, uh, this is not cool. We did just hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Woo -hoo. Woo -hooo. So congratulations. That dance. took us, how many months did that take us? Well, we're at what? Episode, episode 18, 19? 19. When did we start Stream Geeks? It has to have been four, less four than months. four months ago. I think it's about four months because we took a few weeks off. Just shows um, you the power of live streaming. So we got a thousand subscribers. Next show is going to be the holiday show. It is? Yeah. Oh, next Monday. But we might have to postpone the holiday show if we can't stream to YouTube. We got to be able to stream to both. Well, I think by then, hopefully, we'll be okay. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll be okay by then. The plan is to do... Here's my our, our motto, I think, should be, no matter what the social media sites do to us, we still have to stream. That's right. Stream so. on, friends. <laughs> Stream on. So no matter what they try to throw at us, we're still going to try to do the holiday show We'll find on some Monday. way to live stream. We'll get to you guys with a we'll really fun holiday We'll create Stream Geeks 2.0. The giveaway is going to be a... Every 10 episodes we do, a, we boost it's up our giveaway. Thing. This is a 4K live streaming frame grabber. What time is it, by the way? It's time for the giveaway. It's time for the giveaway. And... We're going to put some new things on the giveaway thing before we spin it, right, Let's Tess? do it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Head to facebook.com slash groups slash stream geeks for more information and to join our geek den. Now, Tess, we're going to take a marker and change this up a little. Okay. Let's do it. Should we run the credits first? All right, let's run the credits, <laughs> and then we'll go to the giveaway. So do you have a marker? Oh, you got the boop, marker there. I see it. Boop. There's a marker right there. Very right, cool. Should we put it in between us? Yeah. There. Cookies and eggnog, Drake. That's right. Spiked eggnog. Okay. Here we go. So we're getting rid of Jack Connect Pro. So, uh, need to erase? Oh my gosh, we need like... We need like a... Alright, I'll get a wet towelette. Did he draw with permanent marker on this? This ain't coming off. black one is. Okay. Oh my gosh. Did we use permanent marker?